I have made several of these little uh, Christmas ornaments, uh, snowflakes, wreaths, whatever you want to call them, and they're fairly easy to make if you know how to needle tat. All it requires is your tatting needle and some crochet cotton. Uh, the tatting needle should be about the same diameter as your crochet cotton. First of all, we meter out about thread our needle and figure out about a yard and pinch it. And we're going to start it here. Now, if you're not familiar with needle tatting, it is just simply a pair of, for us anyway, it's going to be a pair of loops turn one way and then the other way which make a knot that looks sort of like a clove hitch. Well, it is a clove hitch. Anyway, but to do it one at a time is a little difficult and every tatter has their own method but for me I lay it across the palm of my hand coming up. I think they call this the slingshot method. Anyway, Slip it over my thumb and pick a loop up here. Slip it over my index and pick a loop up there. And as you can see, those are going in the opposite direction and it works out very fine. Okay, our pattern calls for four stitches and a pico. And all a pico is, is a space. And depending on the space we leave between our stitches, and I can just use my index finger to make that bigger or, or smaller, determines the size of our pico. My picots on this aren't real even, but that's okay. Then to finish the pico, we give it another stitch, and that holds it firm. And when we slip them together, we have a pico. So we need four stitches, and then we need six stitches. Another pico. Four more stitches. Another pico. Four more stitches. Another pico. Six stitches. Three, four, five, six. Followed by a pico and four more stitches. All right, now what, what do we have here? Let's look at our little, we can stretch it out on the needle. We've got four stitches, a pico, six, a pico, four, a pico, four, a pico, six, and four again. Okay, now we need to turn that into a ring. And in this pattern, we're using all of our stitches are done from the ball. None of them are done from our thread here that we pulled out. Okay, we're going to pull our needle through. Try not to catch any knots here. And we're going to pull it all the way through until we have just a little bit of a loop here. We're going to make sure our loop is straight. We're going to run our needle through it, and then we're going to pull our ring the rest of the way shut, and we have one little ring. Now, this pattern calls for nine rings and nine arches. Now, I'll show you how to make the arch. We're going to tie our ring off with just a simple knot real simple knot just like you would knot anything that just holds it in place we're going to lay our needle directly up against that knot and we're going to do some more stitches we're going to do six this time followed by a pico six more Followed by another pico. Followed by another pico. 
and the last six. Three, four. All right, oops, that pico's a little small. If you have one that's a little small, you can always tug it. Okay, so what do we have here? We have our beginning ring, we have six, six. We have four sixes with three picots in between them. Now, this is not going to make a ring, it's just gonna make an arch. So when we come through with our thread here on our needle, we're gonna pull it all the way through. Now, some people turn their work when they're making this, but I don't. I think it's easier just to rotate that so it sits where you want it to sit. Snug it up a little bit with your thread from your needle and tie a knot. Well, that didn't get me a knot, did it? We have to make sure we're going through the right threads. Okay, tie a knot. Not too tight. There we go. We got a knot. All right, so we've got one ring and one arch finished. Now we want to make the next ring, but when we make it, we're going to have to attach it to the first ring in order to make our circle here. So we're going to lay our needle directly on top of that knot. We're going to take our thread from the ball, and we're going to do the ring again. That would be four, a pico, six, But this time, instead of making the pico, what we're going to do is we're going to drop our, we're going to count it. We don't want this pico. We want this pico. We're going to slip our needle through and we're going to pull up a little loop here, kind of like you were knitting. Okay. Try to keep that thread out of the way. And then we're going to finish our ring. And in this case, we've got four, six. We need a pico. Not a, okay, excuse me. We don't put a pico there. We just do the next four because that connection acts as our pico. Okay, so we got three. There's our four, a pico. Four more. A pico. six. Now, this is the one we're going to connect our next ring to. And then another pico ended up with four. Now let's look what we've got here. When we have connected the ring, what we have is we have four, our first pico, six. Then we've got a little connection loop there. Four more, four more, six and four. So we have one pico here, our connection, and three picos on the other side. Now, we want to join that ring together, and to do that, we're going to have to do what we did before. We're going to have to catch that little loop on the back side to pull the ring together. When you're doing this, make sure you don't twist that loop. Make sure it's not twisted. Okay, there we go. Pull that through, and then tighten it up continue tighten until you've got your little ring and it looks like that and it's all neatly connected now we've got our and we're going to tie it off so we've got two rings and one arch so we do another arch that's the next one anyway I will continue around here until I have eight rings and eight arches, and I'll be back. I'm back, 
as you can see, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of, of my little rings finished. And I have the eighth one on my, the eighth arch on my uh, needle. So I'll pull through the eighth arch. Notice, if, if you have one of these that's a little too short, you can just kind of tug on it and get the picots to set the way you want them to. So I'm going to finish the last one. Notice that uh, I've used up a good deal of my thread that I pulled off in the beginning. I'm going to give it a little turn so it sits where I want it to. Snug it up a little bit. You don't want to pull these too tight uh, or they'll just be bunches of thread. You want them to, uh, you want to be able to see the stitches, but you don't want them to be loose. Okay, my last ring. Now, on my last ring, I need to join this beginning ring with my last ring and my eighth ring, which would be my eighth ring. So we're going to do it just like we did the second ring, which I showed you at the beginning. We're going to do four stitches. A pico, six stitches, okay, and then we're going to reach down here, make sure you don't twist it, pick up a loop through that second pico, snug it up, then we're going to add four more stitches. Pico. My thread's getting tangled there. A pico. Okay, got four, four pico. But we don't want a pico now. So what we're going to do, this is the, the bottom stitch here, right here, is this pico right here. So what we want to do is we want to carefully making sure we keep our yarn or our crochet cotton to the back. We're going to go find that first ring. Here's our arch. Here's our ring. We're going to go not to the first one, but to the second one. Okay. We're going to pick up another loop there. And what that does is it joins our ring. Then we're going to finish it off. Okay. So what do we have? We have six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Then we have another pico, that top pico. One, two, three, four. Now, very carefully keeping all of this out of the way, we're going to slide our piece together and we're making a ring this time. So we're going to catch that little loop over here, making sure we don't twist it. Pull it up nice and tight. Pull our ring. And snug it up. Until it looks just about the way we want it. Now we've closed our ring here. We're going to tie that off. And the only thing we have left is that eighth arch. So we're going to Set our needle right down on that knot. One. One more set of six. There we go. Okay, we got our last arch with his three picots. Uh, we'll pull, pull those picots. They're a little bit short. Anyway, we're going to pull that one all the way through because this is our arch. We don't need to catch a loop because we're not turning it into a ring. Rotate it. Okay, tug it up a little bit, tighten it, and tie a knot. Okay, now we need to connect this 
to our first arch and I just try to find I actually sometimes go through that knot that I tied here and just pull our yarn through and there we are pull it through now I just need to knot it here make sure I haven't got it too twisted just knot it I usually give a couple of knots I know it's just a Christmas tree ornament but if somebody gets a hold of it and messes with it it might come undone so I usually give it a couple of knots Make sure it's nice and tight. And I pull my threads up here, give myself a little room, clip them, okay. and then just tie a nice little neat knot here, slide it up, and we're finished. Okay, now usually take this over to my ironing board and put a piece of plastic down so I don't make a mess of my ironing board. Spray it with spray starch. I don't normally use the iron on it because it uh, mushes the stitches. And uh, then take a few pins and pin it out while it's still damp from the spray starch on my ironing board and let it dry overnight. And I will have a cute little wreath to give to somebody or hang on my own tree. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this, uh, make a comment, press the like button, and subscribe if you would like to see more. Thank you very much.